All right, folks, the Urban Sentinel here. I'm back outside in my garden, standing in front of my greenhouse, which we will not be going into because it's still trash, but we'll move on to some of the other things that I've been working on. This is the Urban Sentinel, let's get into it. So first up, I'm going to be repositioning the bird uh, fountain that I've got. Uh, pretty much this area here, I've got to till it all up, get all the soil loose again, and I'm going to be repositioning this raised bed somewhere right in this area and it's mostly going to be just for flowers so primarily what i'm going to be doing is in here also where the flowers it looks nice smells nice maybe bring some pollinators around and in the slope behind me i'm also going to be doing a little wild planting with some of the vegetable seeds and more flowers predominantly through that area now I got a lot done today. I did some preliminary work, mostly clean up and rip up and tear out and throw out of all the old stuff in the garden. I put in some new soil and I've got everything all set up and marked off. So I want to show you that. All right, so stepping on in, what I did, I'll go through a couple of the phases. This here is black weed screening, just regular weed tarping, keeps a lot of the growth out and all I did was I laid this down through the entire garden area. Then I actually, you don't see it as much, I took some sodium chloride, basically salt pellets, and I put those down in a layer underneath here and then put pine shavings, which is what all this is, on top. Primarily for the salt, it helps ensure that as the grubs and the slugs meander their way through from different parts that they don't get a chance to get towards a lot of the containers I had because I did have that problem last year even though I was growing things in containers because the ground itself was open they were able to pass through and climb in and do a lot more damage than I would have preferred. So now as you can see I didn't do a complete covering underneath these pallets it's primarily in this open area here to just help ensure that I don't get any extraneous weed growth. All right, so let's take you around. We'll start over here, compost bin. It's still doing well. I added in some more lawn debris. I'm basically gonna just let this marinate for about another month and a half, two months, probably in June. Then it'll be really good and ready. Uh, most of the stuff that's on the top is fresh from the last two days, but it's pretty good down underneath once you go about two inches down. Now I've got these two laundry baskets and what I've done is I've gotten uh, paint stir sticks. I had them last year in the in the garden before. Clean them up a little bit, remark them. So in here, potatoes marked off in both. There's actually only two potatoes down in each one of them. A little bit easier to maintain. This actually is mint because these were originally were sitting on top of an area where I had mint planted and the mint pretty much grew up through it and kind of took root down in the sediment at the bottom so it's kind of just stayed there but the potatoes themselves are inside this area this way I can still maintain and manage them as they start to grow so I'm hoping with the potatoes I'll do better this year last year they just started to kick in and then we had a weird patch of heat waves and everything else and they just could not handle it now I'm going to show you this next thing I've got squash and beans planted in here. The beans are going around the outside in the clock formation, and then the squash is inside. I actually have two squash. I've got a winter, and I've got a zucchini in this one. And then moving over to this other planter, squash and beans again, same thing. The bush beans are around the outside, and then I've got a yellow squash, and I believe I put a second winter in there as well. Now, while the beans do need root space to grow, the actual container is deep enough and wide enough and it's got multiple layers of good rich soil in there and compost in there that they should both do well. The beans adding in the extra nitrogen so this way they're not depleting anything while they're starting to grow. Now in these two buckets I've got spinach and beans in here. Again I put the beans around the outside. They're always bush beans. This way they can grow up but they don't really take a lot of space up and then the spinach will be flowering up from the middle. And then right next to it, I've got cauliflower and broccoli. I only actually have one bean. I put one bean in the middle, and I've got the cauliflower on this end, and I've got the broccoli down on this end to give them all a little bit of uh, leg room, as it were, to start growing. I tried doing my best with companion planting, trying to get plants that benefit each other 
in some way, either one giving nutrients into the soil that the other one needs, or at the minimum, both plants warding off some of the pests that may come around and try to get at one or the other. All right, this little quartet bucket, we've got collard greens growing in this one. We've got kale down in here. We've got escarole back here. And we've got mescaline, which is basically a leafy green lettuce type down in this one. I figure at the minimum, they were small pots. I did it like this to keep them from literally blowing away because even though they're filled with soil, they're not that heavy and a good gust of wind would have knocked it off the pallet and dumped everything out. So keeping it in the container, no harm, no foul, because even if water builds up, the bottom of the container's got a little bit of rust holes in them and it'll just drain out anyway. So it'll be fine for that. Now, some of the stuff I've tried grow, growing in the ground, I've had very little success, mostly from the insects, the grubs, the slugs, and things like that. So these two items, the carrots and the beets, are two of the prime things that I want to try putting in containers. So here I've got beets with beans planted in here. I did pretty much a center area of the beets and then beans around the outside. It's mostly soil with some composted leaf and lawn debris underneath. And then coming over here, just the carrots by itself, I did almost a, a double circle, pretty much around the outside and then around in the middle for the carrots, giving them each roughly about an inch and a half of space between the seeds so they'll have enough room to grow because I believe these are the Danvers long carrots. Now some of it's trial and error, some of it's a little mix and match here, seeing how things go. And it's still April, it's still early enough that I'm not going to expect to see much change for at least the next month, month and a half. So by the end of May going into June, that's when I can really start to see what's working out and what isn't, and then I can adjust accordingly. Now some plants, once it gets past a certain point, like when you're in June, it's a little too late to try growing them because they'll be growing during the high heat levels and they may not do as well. You may have to wait until August going into September if they're fast growing and they're things that you can harvest towards October, November before it gets too cold. Now in these five gallon buckets, I've got tomato. There's actually two type. I've got one cherry and then one brandy wine. It's like a sort of pinkish reddish uh, tomato, about fist size, maybe a little smaller. The next bucket, I've got tomato and sweet pepper. Uh, I think it's one plum tomato and one general sweet pepper, a little bit smaller than a bell pepper. Then in here, just an eggplant by itself. Actually, there's two of them in there, so I can see, you know, how they do. And then over here, I've got hot peppers. It's a mix of certain peppers. None of the super spicy stuff, just the stuff that gives a little more flavor to a dish but nothing too obnoxious. I've got those set up for later on. Those will be in a totally separate area just in case things get a little crazy. Now I'm gonna show you around the perimeter of what I decided to do with the cinder blocks that you've noticed when I'm showing you the area. So the cinder blocks, I filled three quarters up with regular topsoil and then the last quarter with uh, good organic composting soil. This one here, scallion and sage. I did it relatively simple. Um, two spaces per block. I got it set up where it's eight spaces total. So you've got scallions in these first four and then the sage in the last four. And then you get to this marker with this thyme and tarragon. And if you can see here, a little tiny arrow, that basically, it's a reminder for me which direction the plants are growing in. So now I know from here, I've got thyme and tarragon growing all the way up with the exception of that space, and I'll get back to that, through up to here. And then on the other side, parsley and basil coming all the way through. It's parsley on the first part, then basil on the second part ending here. And then fennel and spearmint, fennel coming over to here. I'm not putting anything in this, is the basically the entryway, so I'm not gonna bother. And then the fennel going to the spearmint to here. Now, this, these two spaces here, and we come down back over these two here, and that one I mentioned before in the corner. Those have marigold seeds in them, so hopefully marigold flowers start blooming 
that will also help deter the woodchucks and some of the other ground crawling critters that come around to hopefully prevent or reduce the chances of them getting in. Now there's a couple more things I want to show you as well. They're not marked but there's hanging pickling cucumber in this one, this one, and this one because instead of doing traditional vining cucumbers that takes up a lot of space I decided to do the hanging and then ran a laundry line off of these poles and if you look at the poles peas sugar snap they're planted down in here so that way they'll climb and they'll trellis all the way up the pie go over it but it'll give them room to grow vertically across here another set of sugar snap and then give some more room and then these sugar daddies slightly different in flavor and texture on this one and then also on that one so ideally as best as it could be said once everything starts coming in i'll start seeing the herbs come in the marigolds come in tomatoes peppers etc i'll start noticing more uh, progress within the containers that i've got set up here and i can figure out how best to adjust what i have what i need but it makes it easier it's this way one they all get decent light and I can water them, maintain them. If I need to water a container individually, if it needs more or needs less, that's easy enough to handle. And I can always do a light spraying with a garden hose if I know it's going to be a particularly hot day where there's a good chance that the soil may get too dry too quickly, especially for some of the plants as they're very new and young. And like I said before, primarily the garden is what I'm going to be working with. That's going to be the, the food that I grow for the family what I plant out into the rest of the yard, the wild area, primarily flowers to make things look nice. I will do a little experiment. I've got a couple ideas in mind about what I want to put down in some areas just to see how they do. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And if it does, then you know, it's a thumbs up, double bonus on that. So several ideas I'm working on. And like I said, a lot of it is still trial and error because I have not yet had a perfect growing season and by no means am I an expert. I learn more from my mistakes than I do from my successes. You know, take it what you will, but I'm looking forward to this year. I've had a good feeling about it, and I think that for the most part, not specifically my plan or my layout, but I just think it's gonna work out better this year, and we'll see what happens. Till the next one, catch you later.